Hello, IC fans, Racing 393. Uh, this is uh, the second video for my Fan RC build. Um, I'm not sure how far this video will go, to be honest. Um, uh, never built an RC 10 or, you know, a car like this before. It's going to be a bit challenging because. At this time, I don't have any uh, instructions. The only instructions I've got is for the RC10 graphite. So I'll be referring to that when I'm building it. Clearly, it won't be the same. Um, and I can sort of sense that there's going to be some challenging uh, steps coming up. But we're not going to do too much of an intro. The box is behind me, well, behind my head, as you can see. Uh, by the way, on the first video I did, the thumbnail was really crap. It's because there was a setting which for some reason changed to shit setting. I don't know what it was, but anyway, I've, I've figured it out now. So my thumbnails should be clearer, thankfully. Uh, yeah, let's get on to it. Let's get that build done. Started, not done, started and see how far I actually get. I am looking forward to it. So enjoy the video. Right, so we're here. We're going to build this uh, fan RC. Um, hmm. <laughs> no instructions. It shouldn't be too difficult. I did print, although I don't need it all, RC10 graphite. I hope the camera's not too close. Like bogeys or, or something. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've got this. But the way it's all bagged up, to be honest, it should be done by bag. I'm hoping. Um, I'm not sure whether it's metric or imperial yet. I haven't looked, so I'll have to get those out if necessary, the, the tools. Um, but I've got to get this set up so that I've got some room, because, yeah, I've got no room. Um, I've got the other camera going as well. That's not running yet, but it will be. And that will film its normal sort of angle that comes in from where you're looking. Anyway, it'll be, I don't know. I don't know what way is which. But anyway, it's from my left. Not that that's important. Um, right. Let's, uh, let's get things out and cameras set up accordingly. All right. So, on the RC10 original, so I'm not going to keep saying this, but on the instructions that I have, it says to fit the body mount on the chassis. So we actually get the chassis out, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, incidentally, the body mount is in bag A. So I'm guessing most... Maybe not all of these actually, but some of the bits now that follow suit are going to be in bag A, I hope. Um, yeah, anyway, let's. Um, I'll take this out now so you can have a close up of the uh, amazing chassis. It doesn't do it justice. That's a good bit of kit. And like I said, with the this sort of the recessed holes, which is they're not all recessed, but the ones that matter are. I mean, can you, I don't know about the camera showing up like the annoying light, but look at that close up. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we have that. We've got carbon fibre, other parts there, shock mounts, I don't need them at the moment. And now uh, bag A. I'm just reading there, so, okay. Right. I, I don't want to get everything out because 
it's got to stay in the bag. That's the only way of identifying it, I suppose. All right, let's open this. A bag in a bag. And the bit I need, I think, is that body mount. Certainly not for the beginner. Because there's no right, right or wrong way to do it. You've got to kind of use your experience of little that I have, I suppose, to some of you. So the body mount, it doesn't say, I'm looking at this, it's a an alum, aluminum screw. I'm hoping it's in here. I can't let these out of the bag. I can't let it out of the bag because I won't know what I'm doing. Depends if the rest follows in suit, which it looks like it does, but however, it's got a wishbone here which I haven't got in this bag. So, yes and no, unless it's bag B, we'll find out in a minute. So, looking at this, that looks like the right, the correct screw. Um, Now, the telling point is, is this Imperial or Metric? I don't know. Here's the Imperial ones. Okay. Oh, don't drop it. <laughs> don't start. Don't start. Yes. So they're imperial, I think. I don't think that one fits. No. 332. Hmm, okay. So there's your answer. Imperial hardware. So make sure you've got imperial before you build it. Now it does say to hold with pliers. These are a bit overkill, but... They should be fine. I hope they don't mark the plastic. It does a little bit. Just got to make sure that the body pin is square. It does mark it a bit. That should be fine. So that's exciting. I think I'm going to move on to the front end. So I'll do one side and then I'll, I'll come back to show you because otherwise it's not going to be that exciting is it at the moment. My first RC-10, it isn't, but my first experience of building one, so, hmm, I've got Eclipse now. Now I've got an Eclipse tool, funny enough. Should be alright, not used it yet, we'll find out. So let me, <coughs> let's dig out some front end stuff. Uh, so. That's bag B. That has seems to have the parts in it that you need for this step. But on this one, it's got black like bottom arms. But they, in the kit, they give you the option of the white. Are they Delrin? Don't know. Definitely. But I've got the white ones there, so that's the ones I'm going to use because all the fittings. It seems like the the bottom arm mount. Well, I think that's here. I think that's it there. So they're like that colour. So I'll keep the black ones as spare and build it with the, the cream coloured ones. So at the minute, bag A and B correlate 
with what I've got. Ow! Um, yeah, alright, okay. That's one step that seems to work. Let, I'm going to fit some of this together. So on the bits that I found, especially the bottom arms, just the bits on the end where they were perhaps the moulding marks, just need a little bit of filing. There's a little bit of them there, a little bit of flash on the end there, so me being me, I will get those off. Um, just as a better finish, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's what you should be doing. I don't, I don't suppose you'd expect them to be perfect. If they're attached to a tree, you take them off. But anyway, let me. I'll just show you that. I'll, I'll carry on doing what I'm doing. So there's the <coughs> one side on. Um, yeah. It does feel quite premium. I'm never a fan of like what they call Eclipse with this tool. This tool makes things it says easier. <laughs> if you know how to use it but there you go now some people would run like a drill through this to make it freer but I think that's okay with the weight of the wheel on there and the hub and things and the shock it's not going to be a problem um, definitely don't over tighten any screws into the plastic or the Delrin just up to where they kind of just nip, yield, nice and flush, hmm, okay, the more you do, the, more, the easier it becomes, the less parts you've got to look for as well, so, um, yeah, let me, I'll, what should, what should I do next, I must do the other side, isn't I, let's get the other one on there, <clears throat> and then I'll, uh, we'll come back to the next bit, it's both done, I mean, yeah, quality. I will say, I was just making, in my head, making a comment about the Eclipse and using this tool. They're never the most easiest thing to put on, a bit fiddly, especially, it's almost counter, I don't know, it's almost makes it worse, but it, I can see why, you know, you're not going to lose, you'll probably lose less using this. I was doing some Eclipse on a, I don't know what it was, something. But I bought the Eclipse from China. Well, it came as a kit. I don't know. I can't remember what it was now. But they, I was trying to put them on, and they bent. I think it might have been shocks. Shit, shit Eclipse. And in my head, I was thinking, well, at least we got these ones. You know, I shouldn't have thought it from Team Associated, even though it's not. But I thought, oh, it's quality. I tried to put one on the um, the pivot. The bottom pin I tried to put it on just by pressing it on then pushing it down on the table and I bent it <laughs> I straightened it well that tells you you know what what does that tell you I'm shit it's shit I did it wrong I don't know anyway Ta -da! right that's that bit don't know how many parts this will be yeah I suppose it depends how long it takes me which I don't want to take everything out of the bag because I, 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 I can't not remember where it goes. Anyway, on these instructions, you can turn over. Right, not sure what the pit, what it means on here now, so I have to <coughs> I have to read it. Hang on. So this bit was a little bit confusing. It on the instructions on this on the proper RC10, it says from bag whatever. It doesn't make match this. Push up the two long 832 screws and lock with the lock nuts as shown. Which is sort of like that. Can you see that? That. I haven't locked them in yet. Underneath the chassis, it's countersunk. But these are not. And they do just go up. Yeah. 
in there like that. I mean, in my head, I don't even know if that's right, if I'm honest. So I've got to nip them up. But they are in there, but that was misleading. I, I was looking for like chamfered nut uh, bolt. If that's done up too tight, would it would it break through? Anyway, um, yeah. So that that was a bit misleading. Those two there, but I think we're there. I just got to put those together now. So, so the next stage is I did find them. They're putting these on. However, the picture isn't clear. <clears throat> I've gone to the PDF on, on my phone, it's still not clear. So I've put them on how I think they should go. <laughs> I won't know yet until I get to fitting those on. Now it's the front stub axles which looks there's a vice involved so that means damage. So let's go on to the stub axles. Stub axles. It says here it may push together with your fingers. It didn't. Well, it did a little bit. If not, lightly tap into the hole. Well, fortunately, it sort of fits flush there because there's a kingpin which would go through that bit there. So I just use like a flat edge. So that's flush. And it's sort of, like I say, it's flush with that bit. Um, that might be a little bit slightly more but I'm hoping there's a bit of tolerance there um, right anyway <coughs> a, ball, a couple of ball joints to put on these now so I've got the front hubs on I'm not sure that's right uh, you can see that there's hubs I don't know they've got like they've got angles to them I don't even see that, it's on the bottom. What do you reckon? So I'm not going to put that C clip on until I know. <coughs> so I might have the hubs on back to front. Hmm. All right, don't forget the C clips, but it would just mean, because if I look at the front there, look, it's sort of restricted on the bottom there, it's sort of, but it does hit. It probably doesn't go down that far. If you look at that, it's not going to... It probably won't go down that far. It's going to be here, isn't it? And up and down. And it has toe out on turns. And this is the problem of not having instructions. Got a print off of something that isn't this. And even the PDF on the phone doesn't clear it up. But <sighs> I'll leave that there for now. because I can always remove the C-hubs. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, pardon. Right, on to the next bit now, which is... Looking at the picture, I can barely see it. Um, front shock tower. Some more lovely carbon fibre bits and pieces. It's a battery brace, isn't it? That's the, I think that's the rear shock tower. There. I'll see some sort of diff brace or something. And that's the front one. That's the one I'm going to be installing. Opposite on the picture, on the camera picture. Shut up. So that's going to be installed. So somewhere like that. I guess. So let's sort out the nuts and bolts. Uh, it's um, 15 degrees today. The other day it was 33. What a pile of crap. You don't know why anyone wants to come to the UK. Crap. Anyway, nuts and bolts. There's one thing I want to show you that's a bit, it's pretty normal, but I think what good engineering. So, putting the front shock brace on, it leans back. 
So you think to yourself, you're never going to get a screw at that angle because of the chassis. But it sort of goes underneath the chassis, allowing you to get that angle. I say underneath, alongside the chassis. Just making sure you've got that at the right angle. It goes in like that. Most times you've got that angle, you never, you know, you won't get on it. But you know, good engineering, good thought out process. You'd think you'd put that on, like the brace, beforehand, and then put the put it onto the chassis. But anyway, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I like it. I'm not sure how long this video will be. Um, the next step. on here so I've done bag A bag B but this is bag F bag F um, we've got all these turnbuckles now which is going to be a little bit of a long winded process I think I might just I don't know whether to when build the front up because and then do another one for the rear um, yeah there's a lot of steering to go into this and then it'll be the transmission so what I'll probably do is do the front end up to the steering bell cranks and then call the video there and then in the next video, we'll do what looks like uh, the transmission. Looking at this, well, this is I know these ain't the instructions, that's a thing. So. Okay, that might be a bit complex. On this, I don't know how bad it'll be in the what I've got in the bags. So, first off, build some turnbuckles to the length that they've specified. Now they've specified the ball end to ball end rather than the gap, which is a bit crap. Um, right, I'm going to hurt my fingers now and do that. Old school calipers because I can't bother to get the other ones out. Oh, which way did that go now? To move it in a minute. So the measurement on this on this instruction sheet is centre of the ball cups to the centre of the ball cups which is crap I mean you can there's so much variation there I've done it the best I can um, it says on here anyway 52.4 mil that's about 51 it's fine I can always, it can always be adjusted can't it so I'll go with 51 for now I'll put those on there. I haven't quite got the angle right on here, but can you see those? I still haven't put the C clips on on the end just in case, but they look alright. So that could be the last thing I do. I'm now moving on to what looks like. A bell crank or something. <coughs> it's a servo saver. I mean, I'll tell you what, to build one of these, I have to say, although well, it's enjoyable, it's really hard without instructions. And if you've never built one, uh, definitely, definitely not for the beginner, like beginner, beginner. Definitely not for me. But it goes together really well, I have to say. Uh, right, let's get some. <coughs> um, hmm. I'm stuck. This, the, the, I won't get too close, it goes crappy blurry. But the steering bell crank, well, there's one bit, it's got some bearings in there. 
There's another one here with some bearings. Okay, they got got shoulders on, so that's right. We know that. I've now got two of these. They've got like a really small thin washer on there. That wasn't on there, I put it on there, but I don't know if it goes on there. I've got like three three of those little washers. But the the bolts that I put onto the chassis here are really thin. I'm just thinking they're wrong, because I've got some of these. Now do they go? In there. Yes, they do. So I've got a feeling these are wrong. I'm pointing out you can't see them. Those. I don't know where they go, but uh. these screw onto them so that might work however do these fit in there snug yes right might have found it out give me um I'm just looking at the time. Give me a second. Let me see what I can do. Okay, so, um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I'm a bit lost now. I've put on what I think how this should go, but I don't know. I've still got like some of that, three of them. So, three of them. I've only got three ball joints that size left and on the bell crank you need four if anything so one each side <coughs> two and it joins in the middle because it won't work three four something don't seem to make sense to me um, three ball joints got a couple of washers there which that looks like a little hybrid washer that's probably wrong Three of them. Uh, yeah, I don't know what they go. I've got a little stubby countersunk there. Got a couple of ball joints, um, track rod ends still, and some longer ball joint ends. I've got three, and they've got them three. I don't know, three or two, can't see them from here. Two. So maybe. Maybe the longer ones go through the arms. That frees up two of them, which will make sense. I don't know. So I'm going to end the video here. And I'll do a closing. <coughs> I'm trying to show you. I mean, there's people out there that think, God, oh, no, not like that. Do it like this. I might even find out before you see part two anyway. I'll do some internet search. I bet there's bound to be some on there. It just seems that they'll come loose on there. I mean, they move. And they're bearinged. Uh, and that, that one can't go on the other way because it sticks up. So obviously the servo goes somewhere for that to move. I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. Right, I'm going to do a closing. Right, okay, so that's the... Uh, I've literally just come in, actually, so i am sort of done this in time, which makes a change. Um, I'm confused. <laughs> now, quite possibly, by the time you get to part two, 
I probably would have found out. Maybe I wouldn't have done. But I'm really stuck now on that bell crank. It all doesn't seem right to me. I might have done something wrong. But there's obviously no... That's the most important part as well. No, it's not the most important part. But the assembly of the bell crank and the steering assembly is really important. Uh, the instructions that I have got for the RC10, the graphite, the original, because it does sort of follow a little bit doesn't make sense to me i might have to look some pictures online or even ask fan rc for some information i don't know there's people out there that might know anyway so if if you know then i know you're going to get this video from the time of recording to when you see it it's gonna be a little bit of a gap because i was sort of plan ahead but well i think so far so it is a very sort of short ish video I haven't done a huge amount Less the instructions that I haven't got as such. It is very well built. I... Is it worth £350? Oh, what? Why am I questioning that? Why is that on my head? Even with instructions. 300 was it three four yeah 350 pound in the uk in the us that's going to be at least 450 or 495 495 us dollars and a gazillion uh australian dollars this tends to how it works isn't it um i don't know why i'm sort of deep why do I think it's not worth it? Why do I, is it because I'm struggling? I've never built an RC10. I've got two to build outside this one, but I've never owned an RC10. I know it's not an RC10, but it's as closest as what I've done so far. Oh, it's it's not. I always worry about screwing into nylon. I know Tamiya most part is all into plastic i get that self tappers though I, I, I might have even buggered up one of the bell crank screw things because I've, I've done it up not tight but it wouldn't do tighter but i had them the other way around so i had them the wrong way around so clearly they've got to go that top side so they screw down to hold the bell cranks down or the steering cranks or whatever you want to call them if they're the right name uh yeah i'm looking forward to getting it finished i've just quickly flicked through sort of the i think it's the gearbox on the rc10 graphite assembly picture wise um that looks quite complex, and I looked quickly looked at the bag of the uh, the fan RC. Ooh. Don't know. Maybe there is some instructions out there, and I've just missed them completely. I'll have another look. So, although there's me saying, "What should I do? What do you think? Have I done it wrong?" It's fifty-fifty, isn't it? So I'm either going to find out, and you're going to know that in part two. Or any feedback that you give me on this particular part of the video I will respond with some answers if I've got anything but it's a short part one because I'm a little bit lost so anyway I hope that there's people out there that know what they're doing maybe you can let me know I hope you enjoyed the video um, and look forward to part two if you'd like to be notified when part two is released then maybe, maybe uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that little notifications bell because uh, usually my videos come out on, on Fridays at 9pm UK time. Very occasionally I might release them later to come inside with uh, the US audience. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. This is kind of, a, I mean, RC10 is, you know, team associated content type is very uh, US orientated, isn't it? So, but this video will be out on a Friday, 9 p.m. UK time. So, 
Um, I'm not sure which Friday, but you know, you'll find out in due course. But I hope you enjoyed it so far. A challenging build, probably easy once you've done it, uh, or if you've already got RC10 experience. But I look forward to sort of continuing with some more information regarding part two. Thanks for watching and bye for now.